Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. This is going to be a two-part video that I'm going to do on a topic that I uh, really want to expand on and kind of talk a little bit further about, and that's the 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 concept behind the cookery as a multi-tool system. And I'm going to go uh, what it traditionally is, what it has kind of evolved to, especially in the tourist trade, um, and then carrying it over into our design philosophy here at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives and how that also uh, as a designer how that uh, encouraged me to develop the companion set series cookeries that we introduced uh, last year with the Americana Serapati with its EDC knife companion and also the um, uh, Sequoia Serapati that had a similar package with an EDC companion knife. And then in the next video, I'm going to show some of my production uh, cookeries and EDC companion sets that I put together uh, just for my own amusement and fun and, and also uh, to apply that philosophy of use to those to kind of give you some ideas of how you could take your favorite large knives and small EDC knives and put together your own kit and kind of just elaborate a little bit on the philosophy of use for that and how it might apply to how you would want to use it and how I use it in my kits. So hopefully you find these interesting and without any further ado let's get right into it. Uh, multi-tools. I'm going to show this multi-tool because this is an excellent example of a multi-tool that is done very effectively. It's compact in size, easy to carry, and it includes a plethora of different tools that one might need in a multi-tool system. In, in particular, this one has um, an owl or all to uh, start um, start a hole if you needed to. Uh, it has a serrated blade with a uh, flathead screwdriver. Um, you have a regular drop point, straight edge knife. Of course, you have the pliers and wire cutters, and uh, Phillips head screwdriver, and a, a couple other little uh, interesting tools that one could find very useful out in the field, and you didn't want to carry a whole toolbox, this is your compact toolbox right here. And to keep it safe and secure, it comes with a, a good carry pouch that you can put on your belt. So, very, uh, very good use of form follows function. Now, Gerber knives, um, serrated knives, SOG does a plethora of these with lots of different tools in it and uh, some of it with very very good uh, carry system and very good steels. So they're, you know, if you're interested in a multi-tool, uh, they're definitely companies I would recommend looking at because they do it, do a plethora of them uh, extremely, extremely well and it is a, uh, something I always include in my kits when I'm going hiking, backpacking, wherever, I always carry a multi-tool with me. So, how does that relate to the cookery? Well, here is a good uh, example of an antique cookery. It's not super, super old. I would probably put it from World War II to the current time, probably even post-World War II when it was made. But it was made for a Nepalese person who used this kit every single day. And why would I say a Nepalese person and not a Westerner person. Well, there's a lot of features about this that will tell you that. Part of it is that, one, it doesn't have a belt frog. So, uh, it wasn't carried on a belt in Western wear dress. It was designed to be carried with a more Nepalese style dress, particularly of that time, where a patuka was still being worn, and this would be put through the patuka uh, and carried thusly across the waist here. Another is uh, the handle size. Handle size is relatively small for most Westerner hands. Fits my hand perfectly because I have small hands. So it is of a very good size. It is what we would call a villager because it's left in a raw condition and uh, not superly elaborate in its decoration, although it does have some nice decoration on the handles of the wood here and up at the uh, spine of the blade. Very traditional. has all the 
uh, traditional characteristics. Serapati style blade, which is slender and um, not a terribly long blade. It's about a 12 inch blade. So, uh, and it's has a thickness to the spine, but does have a distal taper. So it's not super, super heavy, but it's a very strong and sturdy, uh, user, uh, useful cookery. Now, as a package, what is included in this? This was used and carried every day by the Nepalese people. It comes with a, a karta. Now, this is a real, traditional karta that was built and made to be functional. So you have a four-inch blade and a handle that is suitable for this entire package for a Nepalese person to use. For me, I can still fit three fingers with my pinky at the end of it, of this handle, and still be able to index it and use it in a very functional way. So it is has a hardened steel blade that can uh, take and keep a sharp edge and uh, it is useful. Probably the same steel that was used for the original cookery. So this is a functioning carta. Now along with it comes with a functional chakmak which is relevant for the time period that this was made. This chakmak was designed and put together, built, to to really uh, do what it was designed to do and that it has a 90 degree spine so you could throw sparks off a river stone. If you didn't have a river stone, it has a very prominent tip to it to where you could start a bow drill of it. You could puncture leather with it if you had to do repair of your shoes or clothing. You could definitely poke holes with it. And um, it's hardened steel so you could take it along the edge of your cookery and take out the rolled edges um, if you came across it and sharpen it. Especially if you didn't have a river stone this this hardened steel would be able to uh, reprofile your edge on your cookery. In order to be able to do that, if this is harder and this is softer, it would not function in that capacity. It wouldn't work. But it being hard as or harder than the sharpening edge, it can be used to sharpen it. So it was a very important functional part of this kit. The other part of this kit is the scabbard itself has a tender pouch that it is included in it. And this particular scabbard with its kit, everything stays in it, doesn't fall out. So it was a, a very functional, very well made and, and good kit. And this was the multi-tool of Nepal, carried and used by everybody from the housewife, the farmer, the policeman, the military person, personnel, as well as um, the common person, the everyday person. The priest even used this and carried it with him, probably you know, as they're traveling to temple to temple, and especially during the times of festival where they were doing um, animal sacrifices and, and other activities that required them to use a cookery. So everybody used it, and it was built with great philosophy of use behind it. Every part of it was useful. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'm going to take a sip of water um, so that way I don't cough throughout this video. Now, in today's market, most Westerners are familiar with cookery such as this. Now, this cookery, in part, is very similar to what, what, we, sh what we have seen with the traditional useful uh cookery as a useful kit. However, this kind of does depart quite a bit from what this is. This would be um, what oftentimes is referred to as a tourist trade cookery. And why would we call it a tourist trade cookery? First of all, it is definitely designed to be used uh, and sold to Westerners. And there's several things that will tell us this. One is the, the belt frog that it includes. It's meant to be worn on a belt, not in the traditional way that cookeries were worn in, uh, in Nepal when this one was built. Another one, it, and it also uh, imitates the military style cookery. 
a lot of people who are familiar with uh, from the West are familiar with cookeries because of the Gurkhas. Gurkhas made this this particular knife style uh, well known and popular throughout the world. So in this kit, it also includes a chakmak and karda. But what about these chakmaks and kardas? They're uh, very small. This is the karda. Let's compare it with a traditional original karda, and you will see quite a big difference. Very, very small, nice and big. The other thing is that this is not made from the same steel as the principal blade is. Principal blade was um, taken from harvest steel from automobiles, which is 5160 high carbon steel. They forged it, they and they hardened the edge on it, and it's a very good steel for this type of knife. This has the same steel that was made from that the cookery was made from in its original uh, original set. This one is not. It's a it's a uh, seal that. Um, it's probably scrap steel just laying around. They fashioned it in a, 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 to imitate or show that it would, would be the carta. This one, it's the same steel, uh, scrap steel that's lying around, and they shaped it with a dull edge to represent the chakmak. And then they fashioned the same horn handles uh, to them, which was nice, to have the same look and appeal with it, the cookery that it's showcasing. But these are for decoration only. They're not meant or intended to be used. So they are set in here to represent a card and chakmak that traditionally would have come in a cookery set. Now it doesn't also have a tender pouch. And this, um, this frog does not slide off. It's, it's actually permanently fashion there. Now the cookery itself is um, a useful cookery. It's, it's got a large blade, it's very heavy, but it has a hardened edge and it will function as a cookery is supposed to function. The handle size, as you can see, is quite long. And for my hands that tend to be pretty small, um, this is actually a handle that's almost too big. It does give me a lot of room to do various grips and, and purchases on it. So if I wanted extended leverage, I definitely could do that. However, this handle was made for a Westerner's hand, not a person from Nepal. So a, a Nepalese probably would not find this very useful uh, to them. Um, it, it has some features in it. Uh, you know, the cookery, the scabbard itself, um, can be used and useful but not to them. It wouldn't fit their hands, it wouldn't fit their style or the philosophy of use behind it. So, in uh, among the makers today, one maker, which is Kalesh Blades, um, uh, they have decided to depart from the use and making of the card and the chakma. Uh, I haven't spoke to Andrew or any of the other designers there as to why they've chosen not to but I can pretty much guess as to why as a designer I would say they probably felt that the carta and the chakmak are no longer useful and relevant in today's world especially in the West we have so many other small knives that um, fill the, the task of this uh, carta but can do it better than the carta can so why why do it? And the chuckmuck, there's no need for the chuckmuck anymore when you have tools such as like this uh, this diamond rod that you could carry in a pocket or your ferro rod that comes with its own striker. So the chuckmuck really doesn't serve its purpose very well anymore for sharpening your blade or for um, throwing sparks off the river stone when you have a ferro rod. So what they concentrate on is putting together a good sheath package that has an excellent uh, traditional uh, scabbard along with an excellent cookery. And their cookeries of, are of very high, good quality. So that's what their focus is on. Now, 
they are also in introducing modern materials. So they, they will make a traditional scabbard, they'll make a uh, leather scabbard if you wish to in a western style, or they will also um, uh, do a kydex scabbard. And, and I have a couple of theirs with this uh, kydex scabbard. They're also starting to introduce micarta handles to their cookeries, designed in the traditional way, but with a modern material. So they're trying to bring the cookery to the current time period and keeping it relevant as a very useful tool. Now, here at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives, we've taken the, the idea of the traditional and kept it 100% um, functional. So if we're going to do a cookery, a traditional cookery, and we're going to, whether it's a reproduction or if it's, um, like in this case, this is a, a, a design that I introduced last year. It's the trail hanchi, a uh, trailblazer hanchi, sorry. And uh, it was a, a design that I did and had Raju uh, put together for me where I downsized the, the traditional um, Hanchi style blade, keeping a slender blade, but keeping a very useful and highly functional cookery that would be suitable to carry in trails or take backpacking, as well as many other things. So it is a cookery designed to be used, and with that we included a carta that's made the traditional way, where it is a full-size carta, and you can see it's very similar in size and shape, as the one that I've showed you with the villager cook, uh, cookery. Four inch uh, blade and a handle that in my hand I can wrap all four of my fingers around. So it's a full size knife. Now, in how would it relate to knives that we have here in the West? This would be a great neck knife. Um, it's of the right size and it would be a good EDC knife to carry around your neck. Well, it's not in a neck sheath, it's in your scabbard and part of this scabbard system. Along with that we have a full metal chalk muck. Now this is to keep it within the tradition. So it still has a 90 degree spine, I could throw sparks off of my ferro rod with it and it has a, a good point, to, I can do some piercing whether I'm piercing leather or starting a friction um, divot for my, um, my um, bow drill. And it comes with a tender pouch. And what I always recommend is that you take the scabbards that we provide, soak it in oil, and that will soften this pocket up to where it'll be really functional in putting your tender there and keeping it dry when you're out in the field. So all in all, it's a still 100% functional package. Not only that, it has a patuka buttons, which are traditional, so that if you were wearing a sash and you wanted to wear it in a patuka in the traditional way you could, and um, it comes with a very thick and good leather uh, functioning frog system that does slide off and you could take your cookery, put it at rest and keep the frog on your belt when sitting down. So it is, every part and feature about it has form falls function. It, it does what it was in, originally intended to do. So if you're going to put do it, do it right is my philosophy and, and, and viewpoint on this. And uh, all the cookeries and knives that we offer on our website are 100% functional. They're designed to be used, not just pretty to look at and put on a, a bookshelf somewhere or on your mantle. You can do it, but you know, you're doing it in the same fashion of putting a, a functioning rifle or gun on a mantle. This is 100% useful. And if it's um, setting at rest and it's on display, it needs to be kept in a place where it's not going to fall and hurt anybody or somebody isn't going to grab and cut themselves with. Um, so I always say use caution and common sense and, and safety always first. Now, to conclude this, I carry that over into the design of our um, companion set series. And I've kind of married the traditional with the modern Western and, um, and updated it to where it has a relevance in this common era that we live in now. So if I'm going to still do a traditional uh, cookery um, in a, a traditional scabbard, which does make 100% sense to do, 
um, do it in such a way to where everybody can get gain benefit. So it comes with a very thick leather frog system that does slide off. And uh, this one's a little tight, hasn't been slid off that much. But you could take it out and reorient it for left hand or right hand carry. And um, it comes with a full size Carta, which is your EDC knife. Now this EDC knife has a four inch blade with a, a two inch width or about an inch and a three quarters width. So it's, it's a, a knife style and profile that you would see with any Westerner knife with a full size handle will accommodate my hand or somebody with larger hands so they feel like they're actually holding and using a knife that they would use every day. Full tank construction so this is a survival tool as well as a great tool to take hunting or hiking or backpacking and to keep it relevant is now the uh, the your carta can be carried separately and on your belt for your uh, round the campsite task for EDC purposes and uh, and then put together back in the system and carried all together as a group. Now the chuckmuck hasn't been included in this because its relevancy has already been replaced by better and useful tools such as this diamond rod uh, sharpener. Um, I also carry a, a jade rod around my neck for doing the polishing of the edge plus your ferro rod that always comes with a, a striker. So these are things that, that have already replaced the usefulness of the chakmuk, and hence why I didn't include it in that. So this is more updated to the modern time, plus I included uh, in the design of this um, some Western features such as the Western style handles and making the kit um, um, complement one another so it's a useful kit together. You can see that they were intended and designed together. So that's that's um, the 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 cookery as a a um, a functioning multi tool and how the design was originally intended and how it was used and the carryover to today. I hope you found this interesting. The next video is going to be talking about uh, modern uh, production cookeries and EDC knives and how I put them together in a kit. I hope you like this. Please like and subscribe on my YouTube channel and leave any questions or comments there and also visit my uh, Facebook, Facebook page at Blue Dragonfly Train Post where you can leave comments and questions there as well. And by all means, please visit our website at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives where you can find cookery such as the Americana and the Sequoia Serapati, the Trailblazer Hanchi, and many of our other offerings that are 100% functional and every aspect of it is uh, made and designed to be used. Thank you very much. Namaste and God bless.